Hey you guys, welcome back. Uh, so today we're gonna tackle our concealer drawer for my kind of like decluttering makeup collection series. I've been uh, doing this slowly on my channel. So I've already posted two of them. I'll leave them uh, linked down below, which is going to be my foundations and then I believe my primers. So now we're gonna be tackling my concealers. I always mention this, but my declutters are going to be very minimal. So it's really a way of me showing you my collection and I do a little declutter on the side. Um, my collection is big for the average person, but it is relatively small for a person here on YouTube. Just wanted to point that out, but um, yeah. Before I get into the video, I would really appreciate it if you decide to subscribe. It is super easy. All you need to do is hit the red subscribe button and be also sure to hit the bell so you get notified every time that I post. So this is exactly how I store everything in my makeup drawer. I just wanted to show you this is an insert I got from Ikea and this is where I keep all of my concealers. I do have a couple of extras like my little um, fan for whenever I am doing my makeup. I'm gonna put it on the side and then my mirror that if you're familiar with my channel you probably have seen this a lot of times so now what I'm gonna do is basically pull everything out of this insert and show you and then we'll kind of like decide that couple of things I'm gonna let go and then what will remain So first off, I have this little uh, foundation sampler from Lisa Eldridge. I'm pretty sure that all of these are very dark for me with the exception of maybe this one. So I'm going to get rid of the rest just because I know I'm not going to be using them and they're just taking space in my drawer. Not that it's a lot of space, but still. So I'm going to be getting rid of this. And now I do have, surprisingly, because I got most of these concealers before I turned cruelty free which was a year ago the majority of my concealers which is this big bulk whoops are going to be all cruelty free and the un only ones that are not cruelty free are these three on this corner or four if you count the two max if you're new to my channel uh, I only talk about showcase and buy cruelty free makeup I did the switch a year ago so anyway, let's start with the non-cruelty-free items. We've got this Lorac, very, very old product. This is the Professional or, or Perfection Concealer. This is way too old and a little too dark for my liking, so this is going to be immediately going to the trash. Then up next, we have another very old and also much darker than what I need right now. This is by L'Oreal, the Infallible Full Wear. Those two are gonna go to the trash just because they are pretty old. And then I've got here a touch of um, Moonlight, um, I don't know, kind of like a concealer type of skincare. I honestly don't remember about this product. It's the Pearl. I'm going to keep it for now and I'm going to try it out. The color seems reasonable. Like a, it could probably be a little bit lighter, but maybe something I can make work. I'll try it out. If I like it, then I'll keep it. It's just a small sample. If not, it'll go in the trash. Somehow I've got these color correcting treatment from uh, Dr. Jard. I've never used this, so I'm just gonna put it in the trash because it's very old and it's like opened. So I have no clue when I got this. So I'm gonna just trash it. And then for the last uh, two concealers that are non cruelty free, we've got uh, Max Pro Longwear in the shade NC30 and NC35. I will be keeping them, both of them, because I do still use them from time to time. I keep them in this very uh, bad boxes still because they are glass and I'm scared that they're going to break, you know, with the movement of the products in the drawer. So this is going to be NC35, which is definitely darker. And then NC30, I believe this one was a little bit light. So kind of like mixing them together make the perfect match. So I'm going to keep both of these and they're going to go back into their box just because I'm really scared. Because I remember back in the day, everyone who had this, a lot of people had issues with the concealer breaking just because, I mean, you can't really control that as much because it is glass after all. So these are going to be staying. I'm going to put them on this side. I don't think you're going to be able to see as good, but they'll go there. Okay, so... Up next we have these little con corrector, or it's called concealer really, it's by Bare Minerals. And honestly I haven't used this in a very, very long time. I remember that I used to love this. I 
don't know if this is even a good match for me at the moment or if it's even good I don't remember really if I liked it or not I think I did like it I, honestly it's been so long but I'm gonna keep it uh, because I did like it and it is cruelty free I'm gonna try it and see how I feel about it if I don't use it or I don't like it I'll just get rid of it but for now it'll be staying to finish up with the more uh, kind of like potted products we have this a uh, new corrector by Tarte this one is in the shade light medium the colored uh, clay CC I love this I've been using it probably for around a month to cover the green and blue veins around my eyes and then I go on with concealer now I'm just going to do first my only three drugs or products and then the rest are going to be higher end this flower beauty concealer I really really love this one is I don't really remember the name okay light illusion this is such a good concealer I highly recommend it it is probably one of my favorites from the drugstore and of course it's staying it's almost empty at this point but I believe I haven't gotten rid of the bottle or the uh, components because I want to know the match the color match that I am so I can go back to the store and buy it but I haven't I haven't gotten around to it but yeah this one I really love and I highly recommend around the same things of the keeping the bottle so I can remember the shade that I am I've got this Milani conceal and perfect in the shade 135 and medium beige I really like this concealer another really great one from the drugstore I don't know which one I prefer if this one or the flower but I think the flower is a little bit better it is going to be a full coverage and it's perfect for someone like myself who is trying to cover something uh, really good one very affordable I highly recommend one that unfortunately didn't work as good for me is the NYX uh, bear with me concealer serum I feel like this was a little too light coverage for my liking I'm gonna keep it just because it's literally brand new I've used it a couple of times and I feel like I could make a way of you know working with this concealer just so it doesn't go to waste um, it's not a bad concealer it's just gonna be a very lightweight uh, concealer a little bit of coverage not as much coverage as I am used to that's why it was my favorite but uh, if you don't have much to cover and you just want to brighten your under eye a little bit I think this is a good one now we'll be moving on to the more higher end so let's start with the ones that are just one branded and one that for sure I'm gonna be getting rid of this one is the Becca ultimate coverage long wear concealer this one unfortunately did not work for me it is very emollient it is very almost greasy to a point so it just was not for me I feel like it moves all over the place it is high coverage and it does help with the whole illumination or highlighting of your face but it is just too creamy that it just kind of like doesn't set and I don't know it's just not good for me I've never liked it I've probably used it maybe like a couple of times like five times the most and it's just not a good one so I'm just gonna get rid of it because at this point it's already pretty old so this is going to go in the kind of like trash uh, pile another one that unfortunately did not work for me is this one by Jouer the essential high coverage liquid uh, I'm sorry liquid concealer this one was had a lot of hype back in the day on YouTube but um, I feel like the color was really dark for me even when I got it but Jouer back then I couldn't buy but on the Sephora website and I think I returned it got a different color different shade and it still didn't work so just because of that it can be honestly it can be also a little bit drying but if you have oily skin I think you will like it if you can find a good color match to me it was just too dark so it didn't work with me so I'm gonna put it in the uh, trash pile because I really don't have anyone to give a concealer that I've already used to. Another one that I only have one from the brand is going to be this Jeffree Star uh, concealer. I got this literally that day it was released with the powder. I don't believe this is any more available. It was a, it's a good one. I mean, it covers what it has to cover and it also brightens. It's nothing to write home about, but it was a good release whenever it was released and I do still use it from time to time, so it's staying in my collection. So now we have this one from Huda Beauty. This one is the Overachiever Concealer. It is a little bit darker, but I can still make it work. You can see here on the little window, it is a teensy bit darker, but lately, um, my white patches around my face I get are getting a little bit lighter so I feel like this helps me uh, get a more even tone on my skin 
specifically on my face of course so yeah i love that this one has a metal or whatever material it is tip so it kind of like helps to feel nice on the skin i really don't know if it actually depuffs but the whole idea behind it just feels really nice on your uh, under eyes now we have this fenty beauty pro filter concealer i feel like this shade in particular is a little bit lighter for me uh, but I can still make it work if I mix it with other dark concealers to make an example of how I use this I actually mix it with the Rare Beauty concealer. I find that this concealer the Rare Beauty is very very yellow tone So no matter the shade that you pick I feel like it definitely goes more on the yellow undertones I had an issue with the foundation that I could never find the perfect color match. I ended up returning it same thing with the concealer. I tried a couple and this was the best match. I just didn't want to deal with it. So whenever I mix these two together, they definitely make a better um, a better color match for my uh, for my face. But by themselves, this one is way too uh, way too yellow and a little bit darker. And the Fenty is just a little bit on the uh, lighter shade for me. Let's go for one that unfortunately did not work for me. This one is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Liquid Concealer. To start off, the packaging is probably the worst packaging in history for concealer. I literally cannot even open this thing. It is absolutely horrendous. I barely ever use it because the packaging is so bad. Like, I kid you not, I can't even open it. The product just spills out constantly from the little um, the little place where it comes out, which is like a, basically like a little sponge. You can't ever really close it. You take out too much product at once, and it's a very pricey product for the amount of product you get. It's just overall not a good one, and honestly, it's for the formula itself is not even that great, and the color match was not perfect for me. I feel like it's a little too light. So I am going to keep it just because of the price point that it's very expensive. I'm going to try to use it up, but I would never repurchase. And honestly, I would not recommend, which if you're familiar with my channel, you probably know how much I love the brand. I love Charlotte Tilbury. So having such a bad product from the line is very, very heartbreaking. But yeah, this is not a recommendation at all. Skip it. As much as you can. Let's move on to a better note with this uh, Too Faced Born This Way concealer. I got this way after it was uh, introduced and the hype was really big around this product. Just as you know, the Born This Way in general uh, line from Too Faced. I got this, like I was mentioning, and not as soon as it was released because I had a very hard time finding a good color match. And I really love the formula. It's a very creamy, smooth concealer. Provides high coverage without being, being thick, without being heavy on the under eyes, or on my case, around the eyes. Uh, but on me, I feel like it's a little bit lighter. They do have a ton of shades. So if you're not as picky as me, you'll probably be able to find something good for you. But um, I really love it. I wish they had a better color match for me. So I don't know if I would run and repurchase once this is done. But I definitely like it and it's in one of my top favorite ones on all of my concealers. That could be another video if you want to watch like which ones are my favorite. But this one is definitely a good one. It is a little bit lighter but I can definitely make it work. We're getting close to the end. Uh, let's move on with concealer that I have two from the same brand. So we've got from Urban Decay the Stay Naked. I bought this as soon as it was released. It was released with a matching foundation, kind of like the same line of Stay Naked. This, I also had a hard time matching my skin, but it's a very nice concealer. It's going to be lightweight, but um, high full coverage, which is what I always look for in concealers. I got mine in the shade 50NN, which ended up being a little bit dark for me, but this was as best as I could do. Even uh, trying a different shade, this was the best option for me. So while I don't prefer the color match, I do really like the formula. So I'm going to be keeping it. I'm almost done with it because I wanted to do the best as I could as to use it and not just discard it because of the color. And the wand, as you can tell, is very interesting. I feel like it's kind of like a little, like it kind of like cups your under eye to make it easier to apply. 
it's a really good formula and I do recommend it. I believe it's still available. I honestly have been super out of the loop with Urban Decay, but if it's still available, I highly recommend. And then we have the other Urban Decay concealer that it's actually brand new. I've never opened it. It was a backup and I'm very happy that I got this as a backup. This one isn't that, whoops, it's kind of like separating. Maybe I should have already used it. <laughs> Honestly, I don't care. I love this concealer so much that I'm still gonna use it. It probably just needs to be like moved around This one is the naked skin. This is my favorite concealer ever. I really love it The reason behind that I have a backup and unfortunately they took this one away whenever they introduced the Stay naked. So this one was the naked skin and then they brought in the stay naked and took away this one I so much prefer this formula. The also, uh, also the color selection was way different and this is like my perfect color match. So I don't know what happened that they decided to remove it. I know this looks pretty bad, but honestly, I don't care. I'm still gonna use it. It is brand new. I've never even opened it. So I think just like by moving it around, it probably just settled. As you can tell, it's like pigment. So just settled and it'll be good. This is in the shade uh, medium light neutral. I really, really love this formula and I wish that Urban Decay brought this back. So now we have the very famous, very hyped and very raved about concealer. I feel like this definitely changed the game. This is the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. I feel like a lot of people don't like this as much because it is of course a heavier concealer. It is going to be more on the drier side because it is a full, full coverage concealer, which I really love. And that's exactly what I look for in a concealer. So it doesn't bother me. It can get a little cakey if you don't. Uh, moisturize your face properly if you don't apply uh, your primer but other than that for someone who's looking for high coverage concealer I would highly recommend it also Tarte has a new one that I've never tried which is a little more I don't want to say dewy but a little less thick I probably should try it to let you know what I feel but as you can tell I have a lot of concealers so I can't even remember the last time I bought a new one because it's been a while but yeah I really like it. I still recommend it if you have something to cover in your skin, not only to like brighten because definitely if you're looking for a brightening, look elsewhere because this is going to be for someone who's wanting the full coverage. We are now down to two concealers. The first one is going to be by KVD Beauty, formerly, formerly known as Kat Von D Beauty. So this one is the concealer, the Good Apple concealer that came after, came out after the Good Apple foundation, which was TikTok fanatic. <laughs> uh, I feel like TikTok definitely put this foundation on the map and then the concealer was also very hyped. So I got mine in the shade medium 146. It is good, I really like it, it's gonna be full coverage. I did also have a harder time finding the perfect shade for me. This one sometimes can be a little bit lighter, but I can definitely work with it. I had another one that was like a tad darker and that was a little bit too dark. So I rather stayed with the one that's a little bit lighter as opposed to a darker one. But yeah, it's a good one. It's gonna be a full coverage. It's not drying. It's very, it goes on very smooth. So if you're looking for brightening and coverage, highly recommend. And I left the best for last. This is my favorite all time concealer. If we are speaking of something that's still available cause the Urban Decay Naked Skin was my all time favorite, but this one you can't get anymore. So for something that you can still get, we've got the Hourglass. Goodness, I don't even know the name of this. I'll leave um, the name of this thing here, but I don't remember. This is such a good concealer. It's going to be very creamy, very full coverage, very lightweight. It provides brightening and also a full coverage. It's never gonna look cakey or heavy, which I absolutely love because I do use my concealer to cover whiteness on my face and give me an even skin tone. And I also really love it because as you can probably heard from the full video, I have a hard time finding a perfect match to match my full face and this one is one of those. One of the very few that matches my skin perfect. So this is definitely one that I will repurchase as soon as it's over or as soon as I finish it up, which is probably coming pretty fast. To wrap up this video, let's go ahead and show you together everything that I'm keeping. So starting from the naked skin all the way to the two max. So a total of 20 concealers. I know it's very extreme. It's still a lot of product, but remember that this is basically just a 
makeup collection and then I throw in a little mini declutter because realistically I knew I was not gonna get rid of many things so we're gonna keep all of that and then we are getting rid of four products so four concealers and then this smaller sample size of whatever this redness thing is so four concealers I know it's not a lot but it's definitely something that was just taking space in my drawer and not really being of any use because I haven't touched these concealers in years and they just had to go so I know it's not a lot but it's definitely the norm on my mega collection and declutters so yeah this is everything we kept. Thank you so much for watching. Like always, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget to hit the red subscribe button before you leave. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye!